episode of Let's Talk Tobago. I'm Davia Chambers and today we're in the Winwood area where we'll be exploring the vibrant and a thriving village of Roxborough. Come along with us as we take you to some of the attractions and institutions that reside right here in this village. As usual, it's been an eventful week for us and over the next half hour, we will also update you on all the major events of the past week that happened on the island. So stay with us for all the details starting with this week's headlines. Minister of National Security distributed two interceptors to Coast Guards in Tobago. As preparations continue for a first-class airport on the island, project manager NIDCO hosts public consultation with residents. Fifty Tobagonians receive assistance to improve their businesses through the REACH Improvement Grant Program, and later, Goodwood Secondary School turns a sod at the launch of their tourism project. We have all these stories and more when Let's Talk Tobago returns. Stay with us. Roxburgh is usually referred to as the Windward Town of Tobago, and rightly so, as the village comprises of many governmental, private, and non-profit entities. Roxburgh was also known as Cocoa Country, as it used to be a sugar estate that was converted into one of the largest cocoa estates in the Windward area. In our first story, we tell you about interceptors. Interceptors are equipped small high-speed boats used for short coastal patrol. And Tobago got two of these boats recently. It was a fulfillment of a promise that was made by the Ministry of National Security to Tobago. Here's more. The Ministry of National Security is placing Tobago as a priority and tightening its borders. This as two refurbished interceptors were distributed to the Tobago Coast Guard to patrol the northern and western ends of the island. One would be stationed in Charlottesville and the other in Scarborough. So we've refurbished the first two of those 14 interceptors and we took a strategic decision that those first two would be stationed in Tobago. So what I've come here today to see is we've brought up one of those refurbished interceptors to Charlottesville Minister Young says the interceptors would also assist fishermen who are affected by piracy. Minister Webster Roy had been telling me, even before I was in Minister of National Security, that she wanted us to focus up on the northern coast of Tobago, and in particular out of Charlottesville. So in speaking with the Chief of Defence Staff, a decision was taken. Let's get two interceptors into Tobago. Let's come up to Charlottesville because they are going to be patrolling and launching from Charlottesville at various times. The interceptors, a larger vessel and a radar system will be used to improve security along this country's borders. They'll be signaling to the people of Tobago the fact that the security apparatus of Tobago is going to be greatly improved. The minister also stated that fishermen who need aid at sea can contact E999 for assistance. These surroundings are the relics that remain from the cocoa house that was used to process fresh cocoa into dried cocoa beans. Today, Roxborough is the home of the Tobago Cocoa Estate, a heritage park where visitors can learn about the history of cocoa in Tobago, see historical displays, and participate in the fermentation and the drying activities. So, wanting to start a business but not sure where you'll get the money to begin? Well, this story is for you. Through the REACH program, 50 Tobagonians received grants and hope to turn their ideas into reality. I feel grateful to receive this grant because um, in this industry you need a lot of help and this division came through for me to give me this grant so I could do my, um, further myself economically and be financially independent. Nayanda Ramsey is one of 50 Tobagonians receiving assistance to further improve their businesses. She got the funds during a recent grant distribution ceremony held at the head office of the Division of Health, Wellness and Family Development. A joyful Nayanda told us that she intends to use the grant to expand her fledgling crop business, Green Green Limited. The REACH Improvement Grant Program is an initiative of the Division of Health, Wellness and Family Development. The program focuses mainly on community empowerment and poverty eradication among the vulnerable in communities throughout Tobago. It is aimed at assisting persons with gaining economic independence and self-sufficiency. We trust that you will take this investment seriously and work exceptionally hard to bring about multiplication 
and the increase that will help you become more self-sufficient for your homes and your families. Recipients of these grants operate businesses in areas such as farming, plumbing, hairdressing, and garment construction, just to name a few. The grant primarily allows them to purchase equipment to improve the efficiency of the daily operations of their businesses. Junior Drakes is another recipient. He says the money could not have come at a better time. Because I waited very long for this and, you know, I was always encouraged to take advantage of the um, situation in whatever the government has to give you. You know, the government trying to reach out there, so I decided to take the chance. After waiting so long, it finally come true, so I guess they keep the word and I intend to go forward with what I said about this grant. I needed some strong tools in my trade and it came up to some money I couldn't really at the time achieve. I took my time by what I could and now the grant come true. So I hoping to continue and get those more expensive, bigger tools that I was looking at. Speaking at the function, the Secretary of Health, Wellness and Family Development urged the grant recipients to be game changers, whereby they can help provide for others seeking to get into business in the future. We want to encourage you, as you invest, to provide services that meet the needs of families across this island. We encourage you to innovate such that you shape the future of our society. More importantly, we encourage you to think equal, build smart, innovate for change for all of Tobago. Each grant is worth $7,000. I'm Caroline Wallace for Let's Talk Tobago. Roxburgh is filled with significant history as it was the location for the Bell Manor riots back in 1876. Now under the leadership of Corporal Bell Manor, the riot was caused due to the unfair and impoverished work conditions at the Roxburgh estate. As Tobago seeks to grow its tourism sector and attract more international visitors, there's a need to provide global standards at the first point of entry, the airport. And as the plans are developed for the construction of a new terminal building and associated works at the ANR Robinson International Airport, Tobago project manager Nidco met with residents as part of the requirements for the Certificate of Environmental Clearance for the project. Here's more. The new terminal building and associated works at the ANR Robinson International Airport will require approximately 53 acres of land for construction. The revised land allotment is less than one-third of the original land proposal. This was revealed to residents and interested stakeholders at NIDCO's first public meeting. The consultation also provided information on the project and results from the social surveys done in the area. So we've reduced the land take in redeveloping the project by about a third. So we've gone from over 80 acres of land required to roughly 53 acres of land required to build the airport terminal. The expansion of the airport will be constructed for a capacity of 3 million passengers per year. It will have a new Z-shaped terminal building, expanded tarmac infrastructure, a new car park area and upgrades to the existing terminal. Sustainability and limited environmental impact are key issues that the project managers have addressed in the plans. Representatives of NIDCO also explained the compulsory land acquisition process that involves issuing legal notices, land surveys, valuations, negotiations and settlement. Stakeholders were invited to share their concerns or give suggestions regarding the process for phase one of the construction. At the end of the land acquisition process and all that, the information I received is that you're basically giving us money to buy land to live elsewhere. Is that so? Is that, am I clear in terms of the information I received? It's not, um, it's not something that's a, that's a rubber stamp for every single person. So that there will be some form of conversation that it may be money, monetary, and that it may be land for relocating. That may be applicable to some, but not necessarily to others. So you need to wait on the policy, which will then say exactly what strategy will be implemented in your case. Your presentation this time around is good, but you lack the human capacity or the humanity that the people need to give them the kind of comfort they need 
without a land acquisition policy. We have a commitment to have that policy ready within the month, and I'm sure that will be done um, in the shortest possible time. That policy will address the various um, issues arising, and it's a good point. Seven months to relocate is relatively short time, and therefore the policy will treat with that issue as well. There will be follow-up consultations with residents. The NITCO's representatives gave the assurance that recommendations provided by the attendees about the social policy, environmental impacts, and compensation will be addressed as the construction process unfolds. I'm Amadara Mills for Let's Talk Tobago. Eating local produce is important and the Division of Food Production, Forestry and Fisheries believes in this mantra. So they are having their Eat Local campaign 2019. It's a series of activities that promotes growing and eating local produce from Tobago. We have more coming up in this story after these messages. Stay with us. Thank you for staying with us. You are watching Let's Talk Tobago and we're in the village of Roxborough. Now the Roxborough Secondary School was the third secondary school to be opened in Tobago. Its doors first opened in 1965 and back then it was the only secondary school in Tobago East. Today the Roxborough Secondary School continues to provide an environment that fosters individual student development and continues to live up to the motto, love and service. So the Eat Local campaign started last year under the Division of Food Production, Forestry and Fisheries. And with the positive feedback from last year's events, the division has once again planned a series of interactive and educational activities starting this month. Omidara Mills has highlights of some of the events planned for this time around. Filmmaking meets agriculture. A secondary school's film competition is the newest addition to this year's Eat Local campaign. All secondary schools are invited to create a five-minute film that promotes the use of local fruits, vegetables, and root crops. These include balata, mangoes, breadfruit, and a sweet potato. The theme for this year's campaign is Celebrate Our Local Foods, Produce, Process, Promote. So if some young people understand that if they could use information communication technology to, to promote, to understand how agriculture could move ahead, we want to encourage them to do that. We also want to promote a healthier um, food choices among the young people. The Division of Food Production, Forestry and Fisheries has designated May as Eat Local Month. Among the planned activities are an Iron Chef competition for secondary school students and a Little Chef program for primary schoolers. Focus has been placed on promoting healthy local food consumption among the youths. So the division has partnered with entities like the Tobago Hospitality and the Tourism Institute and the University of the West Indies. And it is our intention through the University of the West Indies and with their assistance to ensure that many of these, um, these fruits, uh, the plants, are available and made available to many of the schools in Tobago. So we are going to distribute them with the upcoming rainy season and hopefully we can have kids again not only consuming fresh um, local fruits but as well the opportunity to even um, process and have some sort of value and understand um, that it can go beyond just the natural state. The division is also collaborating with other THA divisions in education, health and wellness and community development. There will be a number of events open to the public. They include an Eat Local exhibition and food fair, courses on hydroponics, ginger and herbs, local beverages and a local candy making. Uh, we're going to do this through courses to encourage preservation of traditional foods and food preparation methods. It is expected at the end of this, we would have new skills that can be trans translated into new business. So that's a win-win situation there. We also this would also provide new opportunities because we have no now learned to make ice cream and porn or um, sweets, lime bowl, whatever it is. Opportunities for family and friends to bond traditionally. Beyond Eat Local Month, the division will continue to sensitize the public about the importance of eating local foods and the associated health benefits. 
It will also encourage the public to find innovative ways of using the foods grown on the island. I'm Amadara Mills for Let's Talk Tobago. Roxburgh is home to the biggest, most active and popular police youth club in Tobago, the Roxburgh Police Youth Club. Now, the club was formed to pro-inculcate a culture of discipline among the young people in the community and to promote and develop a positive and healthy lifestyle. Now, two new programs have been launched for the development of young people in Tobago. Listen up to hear what they are all about. Young people are usually told that an academic education is a key necessity to being successful in life. However, being an all-round success story entails much more than just academics. With this in mind, the Ministry of Sport and Youth Affairs, through a partnership with the Tobago House of Assembly, has launched two new youth development training programs in Tobago. LEAP Life Skills employability, entrepreneurship, activism, and patriotism, and GYCE, Global Coalition for Youth Employment. The programs are aimed at empowering young people with the skills to make a positive contribution to the nation. Ladies and gentlemen, the two programs being launched today, the GCYE and LEAP programs, signify not only our interest in and passion for youth development, but I'm pleased to say it also shows our unrelenting desire and commitment to empowering our young people so that they are equipped to handle different aspects of life. The target audience for these programs is persons aged 16 to 29. These programs will ensure that participants are given the opportunity to network with like-minded peers while building relationships, soft skills, and grooming a passion for entrepreneurship. They lament that they are unfortunately facing huge barriers to enter the labor market. For example, potential employers often expect them to have previous work experience. We all know the story, you know, even for entry level positions. So in many cases, they are denied jobs because they have no work experience and yet they can't get work experience because they aren't being offered jobs. My fellow students, I am humbled by the opportunity to present to you at this launch of these two important programs, the Global Coalition for Youth Empowerment and the Life Skills, Employability, Entrepreneurship, Activism, and Patriotism Program. The programs focus on youth, both at school and in the community. The residents of Plymouth, Golden Lane and Lake Otto, Lodge Between, are pleased to know that we have been selected as the district to pilot. Topics to be covered under these programs include, but not limited to, money management, career mapping, customer service, sexual health, workplace etiquette, and networking for businesses. We need to keep telling these young people that they could do what they want to do and be what they want to be. Sometimes you tell um, elderly people, I want to do this, or I want to be this, and they look at you funny like, is that even possible? In this day of gate, of business development, unit loans, of venture capital, you can do and be anything. And you are not confined or limited to Tobago. You could go somewhere and come back. You could help Tobago from out there also. So don't feel limited to Tobago. Parents need to let these young people know that they can do and be whatever it is that they want to be and encourage them in entrepreneurship. The launch of the LWEAP and GYCE programs took place at the Financial Complex in Scarborough. I'm Carol Ann Wallace for Let's Talk Tobago. The Roxborough Police Youth Club is managed by Collis Hazel and offers a variety of services as well as community events and competitions. Presently, they are hosting the 20th annual Roxborough Police Youth Club Champion League Night Football Competition where teams would have the chance to win the grand prize of $10,000. Now, Goodwood Secondary School leads the way with Tourism School Project as it turned the sod for its Goodwood Secondary School mill ruin experience. We have the details in this next story. 
Students of the Goodwood Secondary School Tourism Youth Club have started their tourism project, and they're the first to do so. The club is restoring the ruins of a mill that sits on the school's compound. This historic relic will be converted into a tourist attraction. Organizations like the Tobago Trust is working alongside the Goodwood students to complete the sugar mill project. We found that um, it was a very interesting site on the way to Charlottesville. We thought that it was quite a fantastic initiative by the school and to involve the young people in this type of project. We intend to be associated with them along the way as they discover new vistas. The Tobago Museum is playing a key role in providing historical information related to the site. I'm very happy to be part of this whole mill experience, especially in the area of research. When this first started and they came to the museum and asked us for information, the base to start this whole, this whole idea, I, I was really happy. The school's Parent Teachers Association is a stakeholder of the project. They too will provide the necessary guidance so that the project is marketed as a tourism product. They hope that this can generate revenue for the school. We have a meeting that is scheduled with the club, so coming out of that meeting would be plans and the future preparation for the project. The Goodwood Secondary School Mill Ruin Attraction is one of the many tourism projects to be undertaken by the tourism youth clubs in secondary schools in Tobago. From the Division of Tourism, Culture and Transportation, I'm Juliet James reporting for Let's Talk Tobago. We have to take a break, but when we return, DIQE hosts Thanksgiving and brand launch ceremony. We have more when we return. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Roxburgh gets ready to open its own administrative complex in the very near future. The project, which is approximately 99% complete, is being managed by Udicut. The complex is expected to bring significant changes to the lives of people in Roxburgh and environs with the provision of greater access to a number of government services. Now it's so glaring you won't miss it at the top of Shaw Park Hill. The Division of Infrastructure, Quarries and the Environment has rebranded and part of their branding is their new signage. They unveiled it recently as they held three days of fun and togetherness as a division. Have a look at this story. DIQE is the best division that there is in Tobago. With their tagline, quality works for you. The Division of Infrastructure, Quarries and the Environment started off the week with a Thanksgiving service on the compound. At this event, the new signage was also formally revealed to staff, the media and the rest of Tobago. Councillor Kwesi Devines admits that as Secretary of the Division, his task is a challenging one, but he wouldn't have it any other way. On Tambrin in the morning, is the Secretary getting the cost for every pothole? The secretary getting the course when somebody cut the road, cutting the road at 3 o'clock in the morning. And it's okay, I'm willing to take the course as long as we are willing to work together. I'm taking the course. That's my job. Everybody has a job to do. Over the years, the division has been known as works, reflected in the clever tagline, Quality Works for You. In his address, Secretary Devines reminds his staff that their work must be done to the best of their ability. The reason we have the slogan, quality works for you. It's a play on works. One, we know that we deliver high quality. Whether it be from URP, the mechanical workshop, anywhere, we deliver high quality. Two, we are a quality division. Works is quality. And we always have to remember, we're not doing it for ourselves, but we're doing it for the people of Tobago. The Division of Infrastructure, Quarries and the Environment presents Quality Works for You. The good old days are now better days. At DIQE, our focus is delivering. Quality works for you. It's all about quality. The degree of excellence of something. And it starts with us. 
The DIQE family of leaders, administrators, professionals, technicians, engineers, artisans, laborers, and support staff, all doing our very best to enhance the quality of service and products to members of the public. We're committed to delivering better customer care, thoroughly conceptualizing infrastructural development, providing support to the less fortunate and disenfranchised, enhancing the skill set of our people, properly maintaining roads, improving the drainage systems, restoring and preserving Tobago's environment. We're about building, innovating, sustaining, and performance. We're about quality, and you'll agree. Quality works for you. As part of the celebrations, the division organized the treasure hunt and exhibitions at their various office locations across Tobago. Celebrations also included a retiree's gala cocktail reception. I'm Kuhn Defreitas for Let's Talk to Tobago. And it's now time to have your say, the segment of our program where we hear from you, the viewers. We'll now have a look at who had their say this week with Marlon Gottsleben. Um, you know, that's not hold on. I've written for you money for the question. This Easter, I am looking forward to seeing everyone to come out and support your local artists in all the little events that we have in Tobago. CXD is approaching, so we are looking forward to studying. Yeah. I'm looking forward to Priority Church, you know, this season, and a little bit of work, a little bit of entertainment. The car show that coming up, I had to be there. The reason for the season, which is the resurrection of Christ, you know, getting closer to him, bringing my family closer, and just enjoying the peace and quiet of what Easter is supposed to be. Better economic environment for all Tobagodians, that we can thrive, we can grow, we can excel. Spending some time with my grandchildren, tomorrow I'm going to bring them up, and um, you know, have some fun with them. And of course, the couple of sport events that Tobago has, you know, taking the family out, meeting friends there also, and just having a really good, safe time in beautiful Tobago. Looking forward to a more peaceful Tobago, a more vibrant Tobago. That's not hold on. I've written for you money for the question. We close yet another edition of Let's Talk Tobago and as always we thank you for watching. Please email us with your comments or queries about the program and be sure to visit our website, like our Office of the Chief Secretary Facebook page, follow us on Instagram and Twitter and subscribe to our YouTube channel. From our house to yours, I'm Davia Chambers along with the Department of Information, Office of the Chief Secretary, Tobago House of Assembly, wishing you a safe and very productive week. We close now with a montage of the In His Presence Concert 2019. We do hope you enjoy. I love you so much, Tobago. 